Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, earth weather, planetary versions of CMEs, and an electroquake note as well. We're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last 24 hours looking very calm considering what's visible. Large active region with bright fields has some sunspot embryos beneath them, but nothing that has developed into a true sunspot umbra. Solar flaring remains ultra low with only minor impulsive ticks into B-class range. That should continue today. Solar wind is variable but pretty much within calm or near calm range and geomagnetic conditions are dropping back to silent. Let's take a moment here to recall that there's more than sunspots in terms of space weather like the large plasma filaments we see here dancing over the limb and also things like coronal holes. We can see that region setting yesterday's earthquake watch. We've got a number of factors suggesting magnitude range is about to shift higher and as this dark opening faces earth and magnetically connects that watch becomes a warning. Let's quickly see what Stereo A sees just behind the limb visible from Earth. It would appear we've got more equatorial coronal holes incoming behind the ones facing Earth tonight. Let's go to the satellite imagery and find the last day, switching from a large convergence line to widespread monsoonal storm activity in the south. Barrel's not much of a land risk anymore, but reformed slightly and has a nice lightning signature in the North Atlantic. It was yet another day of excellent rainfall in the drought-stricken southwest. From low in Phoenix to the high desert of New Mexico, it was a day for water. To the north of that was a seemingly light and thin storm line that ended up dropping a photogenic tornado in North Dakota. Luckily, there's a lot of farmland there, and it took the worst of that twister. We also check in briefly here on western China where the monsoon got a little out of control. As you notice, this is not a coastal village, but could have fooled me with this port-looking vista. Folks, there is a tremendous paper out describing how solar flare energy affects the ionosphere to allow plasma escape from both Earth and Mars. We've long known that Earth responds to a CME by tossing extra oxygen as a shield out from the upper ionosphere. Here we discover it's actually the solar flare beforehand that begins the process on the sun-facing side, an ejection of charged material out into space. We also have an electroquake study that aims to determine the mechanisms involved in the earthquake lights seen before some major events. Turns out that a dipole setup is required with more energy than is available from the quake process itself. This implies that the extra kick we look for from space weather and the global electric circuit is real and interacting at earthquake zones. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, the last three days have seen two new Deeper Look episodes and yesterday's Fly on the Wall podcast post to the members section. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.50 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.